Are people equal or not? Is asked by Aina Koji Kiyotoka. First of all, if you try to respond to the proposition that people are equal, I think you will be at a loss of words. There are many different concepts of equality. For example, there's equality of opportunity and outcome, economic equality, social equality, legal equality, and political equality. And some people even broadly consider innate bodily ability and environmental equality as a concept of equality. But I wonder if he's ultimately taking just one of these multifarious concepts of equality, or if he's trying to be more composite or more inclusive. So for now, let's read the specific examples discussed following this issue to get an overview of the scope of equality that Ayanakoji is referring to and Ayanakoji's awareness of these problems associated with it. The real world today is always calling for equality, equality, equality. There's a cry that men and women should always be equal, and there's a rush to eliminate the differences. He then goes on to specifically mention social movements to eliminate differences between men and women, as well as differences by birth. As specific examples, he cited the correction of employment rates, the development of specialization of subway cars only for women, the creation of mixed gender rosters, and the movement to label disabled as handicapped. Furthermore, there's a current situation where these equalities are drilled into children as part of the school education. But is this true? Aina Koja wonders. Well, it's right, isn't it? To treat women better and to have a compassion for the disabled, and also to teach that the children. It would be right. But the phrase is a refusal to say that somewhere in this social trend, Aina Koji is not right. So how should we interpret this? Well, I guess we need to hear more statements. Men and women have different abilities. Then their roles should also differ. People with disabilities are still disabled, no matter what polite euphemism you use. No matter how you try to avert your eyes, the meaning of the word does not change. There is indeed a general differences in physical strength between men and women. Naturally, men have stronger muscles than women. Men are naturally more muscular than women and therefore better suited for hard physical work. Changing the terminology of disabled does not cure the disease they were born with. Or does it? I guess that's what Aina Koji is trying to say. And here's what he concluded. So, the answer is no. We are not equal. To be human is to be unequal. Equality does not exist. In short, it is futile to admit that these differences do exist and to speak of people as the same, in an overtly simplistic, equal atmosphere. This is what Aina Koji is trying to teach us. Thus, we use the concept of equality, but beyond correcting equality of rights, we somehow distort the nature of reality. Well, that's right, but there's also the problem of excessive burying of differences with others, even differences that can't be buried. For example, the issue of transgendered people being out much in competitions. Their physical abilities are male, but their mind is a female. Even if their mind is female, it is uncomfortable when they participate in women's competitions because it is a man's competition based on the criteria that their body is a male. If we misinterpret equality, we will end up with the conclusion that we must mix with female athletes. In the case of transgender athletes, Aina Koji's point of view on the issue of equality has led to transgender female athletes being medicated to reduce their testosterone. We have to respect their social status as human beings, but we have to recognize differences as well. It's harsh. But in sum, Aina Koji concludes that human beings are unequal in the sense that they are different from themselves. Here, Aina Koji's point about equality is limited to the state of reality. Now, Aina Koji invokes Fukuzawa Yukichi to reinforce his point of differences, that people are not equal. However, a complication arises when Fukuzawa assesses in the second chapter that people are not equal, which is the opposite of what Aina Koji is saying. Aina Koji's interpretation of Fukuzawa's ambiguity, which he mentioned at the beginning of the volume, refers to this point. This well-known passage, it is said that heaven does not create one man above or below another man. It's not an appeal for equality of people, Aina Koji insists. I will explain Fukuzawa's logic in accordance with Aina Koji's interpretation. It is true that all people have the same rights when they are born. There is no inherent differences in status, and they have the freedom to the extent that they do not infringe on the private property of others. However, while there are no significant inborn differences, there are inevitably acquired differences in smarts, social status, wealth, and nobility. What is it that created differences in the Meiji era? Fukuzawa Yukichi inquired. He cites the Jizuko Kyo elementary textbooks for the masses that were prevalent during the Meiji era, and states that it is a matter of whether one worked in academia, or more specifically, in practical studies. Those who are well versed in learning and know things well, are able to do difficult work of exercising their minds and gradually becoming wealthy, as they become people of social standing. Thus, Fukuzawa spoke of the reasons of disparities and differences in a linear scheme. This is the first variation and part of his context. But in the second part, he says the opposite of Aina Koji's interpretation. In other words, despite these disparities and differences, Fukuzawa says that human beings are equal. Why are Aina Koji and Fukuzawa saying different things? 
I think it's because the meaning of equality in Fukuzawa and Ayano Koji is different. Fukuzawa describes his view of equality in part 2. The relationship between people is equal. However, that equality does not mean that the reality is equal, but rather that authority and reasons are equal. For Fukuzawa, the equivalence of reality is not part of the concept of equality. No, that we are using the concept of reality only in the sense that rights are equal. The state of reality refers to these differences, such as wealth, poverty, innate body, ability, and knowledge. If this is the case, to express it in accordance with what Fukuzawa is saying, it would be better to rephrase it as people's reality is different instead of people are unequal. Immediately after Aina Koji finishes supporting Fukuzawa, he suddenly says, at any rate, we humans are creatures that can think. Now, what is he trying to say by saying that we are thinking entities? I will continue to quote him. I don't think it is right to live by instinct just because we are not equal. This was later paraphrased in a dialogue with Chabashira Sensei as, we must at least appear equal. The important thing is this summary. In short, the word equality is full of lies, but inequality is also an unacceptable fact. Ayanokoji shows more contemporary understanding of social trends. His understanding is that it is unbearable to be aware of what Fukuzawa calls the state of reality. This is precisely why people are so blindly trying to eliminate differences in everything. The reality that everyone is different is inconvenient, and they want to escape from that. This is why people are proposing a completely different concept of equality, which is the equivalence of rights, to the disparity in the way reality is, which should be accepted as they are. And conclusively, he also describes thinking about this conflict as an internal challenge for humanity. I found this series of arguments to be very Ayanokoji-like, taking a realist position. Finally, the monologue closes with an appeal to us readers, the irresponsible subjects who live by this instinct, to address this issue. And let me remind you that the inequality was real, that D class also had a midterm exam under unfair conditions. Class D actually had a one week gap in the notification they received for the exams. And I'd like to examine the connection to the monologue here. Chabashita states that this inequality is a microism of society and takes no attitude to fundamentally rectify the situation. Now, what position did Ayanokoji take here? He said, Certainly, this society is not equal, no matter how prioritizing we look at it. But we human beings are creatures that can think. Then he said, and we must at least appear to be equal. In other words, he demanded for Sudo's explosion to be erased. Whether the one week discrepancy is coincidental or intentional is a moot point for me. But this inequality is now going to drive one student away from college. That is a fact. The point is to emphasize that the causes that created the inequality are not in question. Perhaps this reason cannot be determined as a fact because he loves facts and he thinks that it is futile to debate intent. But wait a minute. It's true that in the case that Anakoji witnessed, there was a mistake in the test notification regarding its scope. But is this the unacceptable state of reality that he talked about in his monologue? I think not. This should be interpreted as an opportunistic inequality. Then, it is not a difference in the way of reality is, as Fukuzawa said. So, this is not the case that Aino Koji raised in his monologue. So, is the issue here the pattern of existing inequalities in even rights that should be equal? In other words, it is not the excessive sense of correction represented by labeling the handicap as disabled. It is a correction of the opportunistic inequality of the midterms in the first volume, in conflict here with the issues raised by his monologue. Thus, Ayanokoji has come to search for answers through this school as to what equality and freedom are. But there is no case for further contemplation on equality in this monologue. However, I have considered the starting point when looking at how Ayanokoji will change from now. I hope you will take this discussion into account when reading the series from now on. Now, this was me discussing Ayanokoji's point of view of equality compared to that of Fukuzawa Yukichi's. I apologize for not being able to upload a video last week. And to expand this channel even more, I'm considering to upload videos other than code. But this is not to say that I won't upload any more code videos. But either way, I hope to see you in another video soon.